Hello everybody, look who's back. I have not recorded in so long. This feels a little bit strange. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kira, Island Socialist on Instagram and my blog is islandsocialist.com. If you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below for more videos. And let's get on into today's video. How crazy is it that a basic style like a polar collar is trending in 2021. I was so surprised to see polos all over the online stores. I rarely buy clothes online anymore. However, I do peruse the websites just to get inspiration and to see what is trending. I was so shocked to find polo collars are trending. I'm seeing them on a lot of little cute tops and sweaters. And with the recent release of the Arlington sweater by Love Notion Sewing Patterns, I decided this is a perfect opportunity for me to try my hand at my own little cute sweater polo top. Now, obviously I live on a tropical island. I have no need for a thick sweater, especially right now when it's still hot. As you can see, I have short sleeves on mine. I also paired mine with a little mini skirt. Luckily, the Arlington comes with a ton of sleeve options. So you can choose whatever sleeve is suitable for you. So today I am sharing how I mashed the Love Notions Arlington sweater with the Love Notions men's dark side or the men's dark side has a polo collar or a henley or just a regular kunik i have actually made the polo for my husband before and i will link that video in the icad above as well as down below in the description box i also have two videos on the arlington sweater on my channel already as well i have a full pattern review from when the pattern just launched i also have a cutout sweater hack so i will also link those videos in the description box now please note you don't have to use the arlington sweater but i highly recommend at least using the dark side just to get the instructions the video tutorial for the plackets and the collar superb i highly recommend you at least use those pieces and then you can transfer the dark side neckline to any other top or sweater pattern now i have never done a mashup like this i have no idea if i did it correctly but i do know that it turned out super cute i'm really happy with the fit and the style here is what the back looks like and the side i made my regular size this is size large and this one is a little bit cropped i cropped this one two inches because i was going for that veronica large and betty cooper from riverdale vibe also just a little splice of blair Waldorf from gossip girl and maybe the slightest teeniest one percent of chanel so that was my inspiration for this entire outfit. My skirt is the Sibyl skirt, which is also from Love Notions. And if you are not new around here, you know that this is my favorite knit skirt pattern because it has seven styles. And again, I have one or two videos of the Sibyl already on my channel, so I will link those below as well. For the Sibyl, I just shortened it a couple of inches so that it's more of a mini skirt. And the fabric I used for the skirt is a double knit. This is what it looks like up close. So it's like a plaid. And this is what the back looks like. It's a stable knit, I would say, but it's still nice and stretchy and super super soft and the fabric for the sweater now this fabric was something else to work with this is what the fabric looks like up close it almost has like a waffly type texture but it's definitely not a waffle knit it's just a lightweight sweater knit so this is the right side and on the wrong side you can see that it's pretty loopy it is also very very thin which is perfect for my climate the weave is very very loose however this fabric snags on everything this fabric was snagging on my table edges while i was sewing it it was snagging on the seat belt on the way to shooting it was snagging on branches at the shoot here is a good example of what i mean i don't know if you can see that thread sticking out right there this fabric was a pain to work with but i'm really happy with the end result this is a super cute basic thoron type of outfit 
you look super put together but you just threw on two little knit pieces so this is my island girl type of fall outfit on to the tutorial this tutorial we'll be using the arlington sweater pieces i am making the banded version with the short up sleeves and the cuff on the sleeves so those are the pieces i have cut you don't need to cut a mock neck a turtleneck or a cowl neck you will also need the dock side front and back i am using the size extra small which is the smallest men's size and i only printed the pieces that show the neckline and the shoulder so the idea is that we're going to transfer the dock side neckline to the arlington sweater pattern so let's take our front pieces and we are going to place the dock side front piece on top of the arlington we are going to line up that center front just shifting it until that shoulder tip touches the tip of my arlington sweater not paying attention to the shoulder slope or anything just the neckline so go ahead and just trace out that neckline area once you have a trace you can go ahead and cut that new neckline now you are going to flip it over and make sure you write on this pattern that this is the dock side neckline just so that you don't mix this up when you plan to make the regular arlington again now i am just clipping that little notch so that i can transfer that to the arlington so i'm gonna just fold down where i just clipped and go ahead and mark that t marking and that is it for your front piece now we're going to repeat for the back pattern piece so grab your arlington back and your dock side back same extra small i just wanted a really neat color so i went for the smallest size here i am lining up the center back again as well as the shoulder tip and again we are just going to trace that neckline if you notice we had to remove a bigger chunk of the front shoulder than the back shoulder which means the shoulders wouldn't match now so we're gonna try to true those up so go ahead and mark your 3 8 inch seam allowance on your back and front shoulders Now you are going to lay those pieces on top of each other and line up the seam lines exactly how it would be when you sew. As you can see, I have some excess on that back shoulder. So I'm just placing a little mark. Now I have narrow shoulders, so removing that excess is not really going to affect me. If you have wide shoulders, you may want to add to the front shoulder instead. I have no idea if this is the correct way to even transfer this neckline and make these adjustments. This is just an experiment and fingers crossed, it works. So there is the marking where I have that excess on the back arm side. I am just going to use my curved ruler to remove that while joining the curve at the sleeve notches i'm just gonna go ahead and cut off that excess line up those seam allowances again just to make sure you have everything straight and seamless and lined up correctly and i do so on to the next step so also from the dock side pattern you will need your polo collar piece you also need your placket and your placket interfacing 
So you cut two collar pieces from your main fabric as well as one from interfacing. Then you cut one placket piece from your main fabric and then one interfacing piece from interfacing. The first step to put together the placket is to turn under the long edges by a quarter inch on each side and then you're going to fuse that interfacing on top which is going to keep those quarter inch holes in place. With the wrong side up, mark a one inch line from the right side. So one inch from the edge of the placket and you're going to stop leaving half inch at the bottom. So you're not going to take the line all the way down to the edge. You're going to leave half an inch. Here is what it looks like. With the shirt right side up, you should have a marking on the left neckline. You are going to use that to match up your one inch line that you just created. So that little T marking on the left side. Go ahead and match up your one inch line and we're going to pin all the way down to prepare to sew around this line. So we're going to sew with about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way down the line. We're going to pivot at the tip of the line, sew around like a V and come all the way up the next side. This is what it looks like when it's finished. Now we're going to clip through in between on the line and we're going to go all the way to the tip but not through the stitches to the stitches not through the stitches now we're going to take that left side which is the bigger side we're going to fold it all the way to the edge so we're folding it on top of itself essentially we're going to go ahead and pin that in place and then we're taking it to the ironing board to give it a nice press here is what it looks like when it's all pressed now we are going to go ahead and flip it to the wrong side and we're going to pull that placket through make sure you have a nice neat point at the bottom and you don't have any puckering we are also going to take this to the iron and give us a good press especially at that tip just to get rid of any puckers and to keep everything neat and tidy there it is all pressed now we're going to take that bigger side and we are going to keep that crease that we made earlier fold it onto itself take it to press again and then we're going to pin that in place this is what the wrong side looks like and this is the right side we're going to put our back on top right sides together and go ahead and swap your shoulder seams Now on to the collar, you should have one interfaced collar and one uninterfaced collar. We're going to place them right sides together and we're going to pin all around the collar, the widest part of the collar, leaving the neck edge open. The neck edge is the smaller end that doesn't have those pointy tips. So your seam and then we are going to trim to about one eighth of an inch making sure to clip those corners so that when we go to poke out our tips we have nice pointy collar tips so go ahead and poke out those corners if you have one of those point turner thingies go ahead and use that i am just going to use the tip of my scissors because i don't have a point turner then we're going to take our collar to the ironing board and give it a nice press. You can top stitch if you would like to. I basted the open ends of my collar just so that I can attach it to the neckline easier without it slipping and sliding, especially in this fabric. So I'm going to match up the center back collar with the center back neck and then I'm going to pin the collar edges all around the neckline. On that left side where we have that folded over placket piece, the edge of the collar hits half an inch before the crease. And then on the right side of the shirt, it hits half an inch before the placket seam. Go ahead and sew all around the collar. 
Now we're going to fold those placket ends back on themselves right at the seam to the right side. The collar should be sandwiched in between the shirt and the placket. And on the left side, we're folding right at the crease. Again, the collar should be sandwiched in between the shirt and that folded over placket. Go ahead and sew over those placket bits. Once it's sewn, we're going to flip those to the right side. And there we have a perfect placket with the collar. I sewed with white thread and I'm really kicking myself for doing this. But I really didn't have any matching thread and now I totally regret not doing the binding option. It means if I ever wear this polo open, you will see that white thread. Oopsie. So now I'm just pinning my placket in place to keep it steady while I work on the next step. Go ahead and flip the shirt to the wrong side. And now we are going to sew those placket tails straight across like so. The next step is to stitch from the right side on top of those little tips, either in a bandeau stitch style or a rectangle, anything that is just going to hold those tips in place. Once that's done, you can do your buttons and buttonholes and then go ahead and sew up the rest of the top as normal. I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. I had so much fun experimenting y'all know i'm a fan of hacking and mashups so i think that you can take the dark side neckline with the polar collar or even the henley and transfer it to any top or sweater pattern you already own i personally love the way it looks with the arlington because of these cute little puff sleeves and also the banded hem this is just one of those head out the door and i feel comfortable all day the only thing that i have a problem with is my own fault, I used white serger thread on the inside of the collar. Why did I do that? Well, I don't have any matching serger thread, but honestly, even black would have been better than the white. I didn't think through the fact that when the collar is open, you can see the white on the inside. And the thing is, it looks so cute open. I am tempted to go back in and add the binding but i already have all my buttons and buttonholes so it's gonna be a fun challenge to get that done i think i can squeeze it in there somehow though because i really like the way it looks open as well let me know what you guys think is that white bothering you or can i leave it like this i don't know like give me some ideas in the comment section so my buttons have like a slight chanel feel that's why i said that little one percent of chanel it was the buttons and it was the fabric of the skirt now i have no idea what type of fabric this skirt is i know it's a double knit that's about all i know this one i actually picked up in my local fabric store there were no labels just the price tags i have no idea <laughs> what it is is there such a thing as a boucle knit somebody let me know because it has that boucle and tweed type texture but it's a knit fabric Another thing I wanted to mention is you guys would have seen I used the extra small neckline and collar. So the one I made for my husband is a medium and I tried on that top and the neckline was just just the slightest bit too open for my liking when it was buttoned up. I wanted it buttoned up really close to my neck. So I printed his size, the medium, and I also printed the extra small just to compare the color and the neckline and it was only off by like quarter inch so i knew i would get away with the extra small so i went ahead and did the extra small and i have absolutely no problems with the extra small so that is just a little tip if you are going to try this hack is to be honest i don't even think it matters which neckline and color you use as long as you make sure to chew up the shoulders after you should be fine so that is it for today's video i also just started a tick talk oh my goodness i cannot believe i'm finally on tiktok i feel so behind i feel so old i cannot keep up with these youngins and their technology i have a tiktok with me throwing some leaves in this outfit and it is so cute so make sure you go and follow me on tiktok thank you so much for joining me today if you enjoyed give me a big thumbs up don't forget to click the subscribe button on your way out if you haven't done so already i will catch you guys in my next video bye